Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I'm Gary Gunderson. Today, I'm going to go through the process to reactivate the stock on a PPS 43C pistol, turning it into an SBR. Of course, I already received the tax stamp from the ATF, so there's nothing illegal about this. There are a number of ways you can go about this activation, and in this video, I will go through what I did step by step while also mentioning some other options you may have. Apart from the pistol, you will need the properly sized push pin and the properly sized and tensioned spring. That is why I believe purchasing a parts kit is the easiest method. As of right now, they are available on Centrifire Systems, which is where I purchased mine. It also comes with more magazines, so it's not a bad deal. Here you can see how the folding stock functions. There is a push pin that you depress to unlock and change the position of the stock. That pin is kept under pressure by a spring held against the wide head of the pin and the large bar the stock is attached to. Below that is a locking latch bar which is cammed when you depress the push pin and start to move the stock. It locks into place at either end of travel. On the PPS-43 pistol, you will need to remove their pin which, as they installed it, functions as a retaining pin to hold the stock in place. Then, you will need to drill into the top of the receiver to widen the hole so the proper push pin can function. Once that is done and you have all the components together, assemble the pin, spring, and locking latch bar back together. I tried a few different ways to get the pin out of the pistol, and eventually settled on using the Dremel with a cutoff wheel to cut through the pin above the latch bar. I wanted to keep away from the locking latch bar as much as possible since I was planning to cut away that on the parts kit to preserve the original push pin as much as possible. Here you can see the pieces from the pistol. I had to use pliers and a hammer to pull the pin out of the receiver since it was a tight fit. Since the pin was the only thing holding the stock in place, after removing it the stock moves freely but it will not lock into place. In the original firearm, the pin was put through the latch bar and peened over. I decided to try and preserve the pin as much as possible and cut away at the latch bar and the peened over portions only so the pin is altered as little as possible when I extract it. I was able to do this pretty well, then I used a punch to remove the pin and spring. There was enough material left that a fair bit of the pin still sticks through the bottom when it is completely put together. As you can see by both receiver pieces side by side, the difference in the holes for the pins are substantial. After measuring, I used a 7 16th inch drill bit to match the original receiver's hole for the push pin. The key here is to go slow and steady or you're going to mess up your receiver. Once you are done with that, you may need to file the area to smooth out the edges. Keep in mind a push button is going to be in this hole, so you're going to be shoving your thumb or finger in the area with some force, and you don't want to get it cut. The last part is to assemble everything together and get the pin fixed to the latch bar. There are a few ways you can do this. You can thread the parts and screw it together. You can weld. You can try peening the pin over or you can find some other way to attach the pieces together. Not having access to a welder, I decided on doing two of these together, peening what remained of the original pin over and also using JB Weld to make sure it's extra secure. I did run into an issue here, which I'm not sure if it is unique to my pistol or maybe something weird with all of these, but the center bar on the parts kit does not move when you manipulate the stock, but it did turn when you manipulated the stock on my SBR. This meant the hole turned too, so the stock had to be at the right position in order to fit the push pin and latching bar. And in my case, this was not fully closed or open, but at a camming point. So I had to use some clamps to hold everything in place to get it lined up due to the awkward positioning of the stock. I was able to get the push pin through the locking latch bar though, and it did require some persuasion with my punch hammer, but the pin was actually tight enough on its own that I could manipulate the stock without it coming undone from the spring pressure. I clamped the receiver down on the push pin so there was no pressure where the pin goes through the latch bar. 
Then I used a hammer and pointed punch to peen over portions of the pen. After that, I used some JB Weld and let cure so it would keep everything in place. And that's it. Simply use the push pin, fold out the stock and the shoulder pad, lock in place, and you're good to go. I now have a fully functioning stock on my SBR. I apologize that some of the footage of the work was missing or shaky. That's due to the camera being on my bench at the time of work, so while I was thwacking away with the hammer, you couldn't really see anything anyways. And like I said, this method may work for you, or you may want to try one of the other ones I mentioned. You don't have to buy a parts kit if someone can fabricate the proper spring and push pin for you, and that would take away some steps in this process. All things considered, I thought this was relatively simple and worked out. Thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have an additional method to reactivate the stock that I didn't mention here that others may find helpful or easier. Please like the video if you found it helpful or interesting, and subscribe to this channel to see future content. Bye.